Okay, so this is the definition of a hater, y'all. Dan, the man, Raphael, who covers boxing for ESPN, I believe, hops on Twitter, May the 7th, jumps the gun, and says, no official pay-per-view numbers yet for Floyd, but two industry sources tell me they have, or tell me they look bad. Under one million. We'll see if true. Heavy dollar losses for Showtime. And then, you know, you have um Kevin Isle jump on and say, well, under, I've heard. And, you know, the hating, the hating begins. And there were several tweets that came out with... Dan Raphael, you know, if Mayweather pay-per-view indeed does under one million, that will mean heavy dollar losses for Showtime. My sources tell me break even was about 1.1 or 1.2 million buys. But of course, he's saying they're well under a million paper. The, the Mayweather Guerrero event on May the 4th was well under one million pay-per-view buys. Then he says here, if Showtime loses millions on the pay-per-view, since it guaranteed so much to Floyd, I'd imagine the dollars will come out of his, of its network, okay, boxing budget. And um, then there's another, then he goes on. Uh, I liked Floyd Guerrero match, but promotion never got clicked, never got clicked. No kickoff presser started off on terrible foot, and it never recovered. Then he goes on a little later on. Floyd, whose dollars were guaranteed, did very little media. As someone in biz said to me, this last impression wasn't supposed to be, what, or his last impression, impression wasn't supposed to be his first. This is hilarious to me because although they didn't, the Mayweather Guerrero uh, pay-per-view event didn't launch off with a large city-to-city -city presser, which is, you know, uh, common amongst, you know, for boxing events over the past years. The Showtime, there was heavy promotion. Showtime put heavy dollars into All uh, Access, which aired on Showtime and CBS and all the other platforms. They had a documentary called Mayweather that aired. I believe that one was on Showtime. And there was a third uh, documentary. And I mean, one of the documentary, documentaries featured the voice, the, the All Access featured the voice of Common. Then you had a, the, one of the documentaries, I, I believe it was Mayweather that featured on CBS. This documentary uh, featured the voice of LL Cool J narrating. Then it had you had Kobe Bryant um Magic Johnson, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Oscar De La Hoya all appeared in the uh, in the documentary, which was, which was more like telling Floyd Mayweather's biography, his life story from er from you know early years. But I mean, you know, we can go on and on all all over Twitter, and, and you know, and it says that. And by the way. This is Dan Raphael. And by the way, a terrible Final Four interview does not a promotion make. How was the the Final Four interview that Floyd Mayweather did for the March Madness NCAA tournament? Is that a terrible interview? This is probably like the first time that any boxer has ever been on that NCAA platform to promote a, a boxing event like that. This is this stuff that the stuff that he's that he did was unheard of in terms of promotions. I would have liked to have seen a kickoff promotion, city to city promotion. I probably would have gave the, the the event some teeth. But the bottom line is that Dan Raphael jumped the gun and had multiple news sources all throughout the world jumping the gun saying that the event the pay-per-view event did under one million pay-per-view buy, pay-per-view per view buys, and this, I guess, this was supposed to hurt 
you know, Floyd Mayweather. Dan Raphael's really, really a subtle hater. If you really listen to him, listen to all his interviews, listen to the things he says, he's a real subtle hater of Floyd Mayweather Jr. This is the type of guy that after Pacquiao takes two major losses, <clears throat> one to Timothy, Timothy Bradley, which may, Pacquiao didn't do enough in the later rounds to win that fight. You can't chalk it up to to uh, you can't chalk it up that he won a lot of early rounds. A lot of early rounds were close. There were some rounds that I thought Pacquiao dominated, but there were rounds when Pacquiao didn't fight, didn't do enough, and he definitely got out boxed in the last three rounds. But Dan Raphael, a lot of other boxing so quote unquote experts run around here. He's an expert, but um, I wonder when the last time was Dan Raphael was in a boxing ring, and what and what weight would he fight at? Because he couldn't fight a heavyweight. Or do they have a super heavyweight? But a subtle hater of Floyd Mayweather Jr., just like Larry Merchant and HBO, were subtle haters. Of Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to show you how funny people are. I'm going to show you how funny people are. But before I say that, let me, let, let's go to, let's go to why I say the jump in the gun. Because now here you have on Fight Hype, where Fight Hype is now reporting that Floyd Money Mayweather tops 1 million pay-per-view buys again. And I'll put the link in the description box for the Fight Hype interview. The Fight Hype is like the best, one of the best along with I like boxing socialists, but Fight Hype is one of the better uh, websites that that covers box boxing and MMA events because they give a fair shake. You know, Dan Raphael is biased. There are a lot of other reporters out there that are biased, that are waiting for the downfall of Floyd Money, Money Mayweather. Now, how do these guys look? Now that it's coming out that the event, the May 4th Mayweather Guerrero event, indeed did top 1 million pay-per-view buys. Floyd Mayweather has surpassed Oscar De La Hoya as pay-per-view king. I'm talking about has done better numbers than De La Hoya by far. He's done better numbers than Tyson. He's done better numbers than anyone in history. And no matter what he does, he can't win. When he... When people say he doesn't fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, his fights aren't exciting. He plants his feet, fights flat-footed for the majority of the Miguel Cotto fight and disregards his defense to give people an exciting fight. And then what did everybody say? Floyd Mayweather's getting, Floyd Mayweather's getting old. His skills are deteriorating. He's losing his legs. You know what I mean? Then he goes to jail for what set up what amounted to about 70 days and they make the biggest deal out of it as if he went to prison for seven years i mean this guy he can't win then when he when he's when he's fighting his father when he's you know when he's given the public excitement with you know you know acting wild and cursing and and loud and boisterous on 24-7 uh, and at press conferences and everything. People, you know, people, they love it. But they, but, but even when he does that, everybody got something bad to say. You know, oh, he's so obnoxious. He's so arrogant. I hate him. You know, gay weather this. You know, you know, just Floyd, that, everything is hatred. So then when he comes out, during the Showtime campaign, and basically says that you know when he was with HBO, twenty to twenty, the producers of twenty four seven wanted all that wildness on the show for ratings. You know they want him to act negro negroidly, even though I never felt like he acted negro, you know, like a, a you know negroidly in on the twenty four sevens. You know I'm a fan of Floyd Mayweather, but then when he goes to Showtime and calms it down, and then starts showing more of who he really is, now he's born. You know, just, so then he fights Cotto, like I said, flat-footed, now he's losing his legs. But it was an exciting fight, but he's losing his legs. He, he's, he's slipping. He's showing slippage, this, that, and the third. You know, he, he Cotto won. I 
Watch that fight, that Mayweather Cotto fight, I don't know how many times. Cotto might have won. I counted two rounds that you could have gave to Cotto. Two rounds that were actually close that you could have gave to Cotto. And maybe you could have given him a third round. To give him four rounds was generous. He might have been able to give him. And then people say, oh, this is this is the worst Floyd has ever looked. They, you know, if Cotto was getting out and Cotto won the fight. Uh, if you think Cotto won that fight where he, oh, I only saw two rounds that you could have gave him. Floyd dominated Cotto. And Floyd weighed 147 for that fight. Cotto had ballooned up to what, 160, 165? It was eating right hooks all night. Almost got knocked out several times in the fight. And people who don't know Floyd's career don't know Floyd had a hard, a difficult fight with people who like to consider a difficult fight with. Oscar De La Hoya, where they tried to, where they actually tried to give Floyd a split decision in that fight, a split decision victory. One judge actually had De La Hoya winning, which was preposterous. People don't, I mean, people don't know the wars that Floyd has fought in his career. You don't know. Go back to Floyd Mayweather when he when he fought the second Chavez fight, the Emmanuel Augustus, the Emmanuel Augustus fight, the Chop Chop Corley fight for the for the early rounds of the Zab Judah fight. Floyd usually his fights are usually difficult in the first or or not difficult, but he has to fight, figure his opponent out maybe the first two or three rounds. And early on in his career, he might have took three rounds before he figured him out, and then he would dominate him. But you he he's but he's had wars in the earlier part of his career. Where he would stand in the pocket and deliver a fight. And then when he became more defense oriented because it would extend his career, now he's a born fighter. If you're not a boxing purist, if you're just a, a fly by night boxing fan, you're just a casual fan, all of a sudden Floyd's a, uh, you know, this is this is ridiculous. So he can't win. So he comes into the Guerrero fight and now he's on his feet, dancing, boxing, moving. Get Guerrero's catching straight lefts and jab, getting jabbed all night. He's catching right hooks. Floyd never even threw the left. Floyd could have threw that left hook. Flo I mean, Floyd could have put an arsenal on Guerrero. Floyd was kind to Guerrero in that fight. But now all of a sudden, Floyd gives you gives you a stick and move plus a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Guerrero couldn't hit him, and it's Floyd's fault. Now, there was a boring fight, according to that Floyd Mayweather Haters. Haters. Little slick comments that Larry Merchant would always make towards Floyd. I was so happy to hear the Floyd left show the uh, HBO. That was a complete, and then the entire Golden Boy platform <laughs> left HBO. Complete victory for Floyd because of how they treated him. Floyd was never under contract in, in, in with HBO. He was only under contract for three out of 17 years. They never put him on the contract. But after he left, was willing to offer Adrian Broner a contract. Why didn't Floyd ever have a contract with HBO? A long-term contract. Why did HBO show so much hatred? And it was real subtle towards Floyd Mayweather Jr. But love Pacquiao. Just love Pacquiao to death. Pacquiao's guilty of doing all the same things that Floyd Mayweather's doing, but you just never hear about it because it, because it doesn't make news in the U.S. It, it's, it's, it is things that happen in the Philippines, and it never makes news, but Pacquiao's so beloved. Just think about how racist this country is, how beloved Pacquiao is in the U.S. of A., how corporate America gives him sponsorships left and right, and he just took them and, and Pacquiao just took a crucial loss. Knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez, who is a legend. Juan Manuel Marquez is legendary in boxing. Knocked him, put him where he belonged on his ass. Put him to snout his ass. He was planking, put him on his put him on his stomach. Knocked out cold. Crucial loss. 
And now they and now the top ranked Bob Baron Camp wants a fifth fight. Why is a fifth fight with Juan Man Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao necessary? When anybody can clearly see that Pacquiao that Juan Manuel fought him toe to toe, fought him in very close fights and won. Really to me, won all four. And I like Pacquiao. But you don't get a free pass because because you had a, a, a short string of, of knockouts of fighters that you were fighting that catch weight and drained them down. But you couldn't, they can't even give, they want a fifth fight with Marquez and can't even give Marquez a fair share in the profits. So Marquez said, I'm going to go fight Timothy Bradley. And now they're going to fight Brandon Bam Bam Rios. Why not Mike Alvarado? Because let me tell you why they're going to fight Bam Bam. Because Bam Bam is going to be there in the pocket fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe Pacquiao and could possibly get knocked out, uh, Bam Bam, because he's flat-footed, remove-type fighter, who's also a warrior. But he's a more of a stick-and-move fighter. And they don't want to take the chance of putting Pacquiao in there with a stick and move fighter. They need somebody that's going to be stationary. And trust me, and I believe me, I love Bam Bam. Tough, hard competitor, and I hope he wins that fight. But it's going to be tough. But I mean, you know, and not, you know, but I'm just saying now that, you know, they, you know, you're not hearing Pacquiao's name as much now because he took crucial losses. Now you just start, you're hearing more of Saw Canelo Alvarez, and I think that Canelo Alvarez fight is going to be a good fight. I think Canelo is skilled, he's fast, he's got good defense. He kind of, he kind of doesn't. He's not active enough, and he gets tired. And I think Floyd's going to win that fight, and I, it'd be interesting to see how Floyd's going to win that fight. But I do think it'll be a good fight because I think he's a good boxer, and that's the fight I want to see next. But the bottom line, the point that I'm trying to make here in this video. It's just the hating that the media that Floyd Mayweather has to endure by way of the media. How they constantly are hating on him. You know, here it is. They reporting that the fight did well under one million pay per view buy, pay per view buys, right? And they didn't even have all the numbers in, right? They didn't even have all the numbers in, but it was making this guesstimation. You know, talk about reliable sources. Dan Raphael. And now here it comes out via fight hype that Floyd Money Mayweather tops 1 million pay-per-view buys again. Sources close to the information have informed us that last Saturday, Saturday's May Day, Mayweather vs. Guerrero pay-per-view event has indeed exceeded 1 million buys. The news comes on the heels of rumors being spread by select individuals in the media who allege that the numbers look bad and fell short of the 1 million mark. Official numbers have yet to be released, but we're told that a preliminary announcement could come as early as today, though the count is still rising. And that article was on early today, May 10th. How does Dan Raphael look? You know... Sipping on that cup of haterade. You know, why don't y'all just sit back and admit that you're witnessing greatness when you watch Floyd Mayweather fight? We're talking an all-time legend. In my book, best boxer that I have ever seen. And I've seen him since the 1970s. Ali, Sugar Ray. I watched film on... on uh, on, um, on all the greats, Sugar Ray Robinson, Tommy the Hitman Hearns, Frazier, Pep, Pernell Whitaker, Julio Cesar Chavez. I mean, we can go on and on and on. And I mean, prior, this guy here. You're watching greatness. Well, he takes a loss or not in these last five fights. This is the best boxer you have ever seen in your life. Stop the hating, y'all. Peace.